right, let's begin. Welcome to episode two of a nature-based study in cooperation with Ernest of Gaia. This episode is titled Observing the Landscape. Welcome to the world of Dows, or at least this is what we think the landscape looks like. While we may not recognize all the layers of organizations, this is our dominant culture image of a manicured landscape with clearly defined edges and pathways. These just don't exist yet in Web3. <laughs> so what's the reality? The reality of cooperation multiplied, multiplied by technological innovation oftentimes looks like a mess. <laughs> so, like, where, where the duck am I? You know, those look like thorns. Um, don't know if I want to go in there. But that's okay, mate. When we step back a bit and observe, we can see that there is structure in the unknown, but we may not be able to see a path forward despite the fact that we can hear others down the path somewhere else. Nor do we know what's necessarily underneath these layers we discover. Going bankless. When we step back together, we zoom out some more. Now we can see that there's a river to cross before we can even begin to understand the Web3 environment on the other side. So on this journey, in this episode, and the next one, we're going to begin to cross the governance bridge. Each guild has its own path of self-governance and participation within the DAO. The next section of this video will use three different guilds' governance docs as examples, being the Education Guild, the Research Guild, and Dalationships Guild. And essentially, these governance docs, you know, like, like what do they explain? DAOs share things. We share a brand, a treasury, resources, and operations. And it's the shared governance that binds all these. And generally, we go to Notions to find that information. So let's do that. First, the Research Guild. In the Research Guild, we have, let's go back to our slide, the brand, right? We have calendars of what we do. Um, we have information for members. So we do this in the Bankless brand, so we often create media around it. But essentially, each guild also has their own brand. And each guild, each pirate ship, you know, has their own way of getting started and getting involved with that guild. In the research guild, the governance that explains and creates those pathways for getting started and getting involved is in the governance section on the right hand side. And our treasury section you can find in the middle, kind of at the bottom, a toggle, where we link to the guild's multi-sig and also show relevant treasury documents for guild members. In the education guild, we have a nice little governance section right here in the mid middle, surrounded by all the different ways to get involved in projects and collaborations. And then on the right-hand side, is where the Education Guild shows their multi-sig as well as the spending documents associated with their multi-sig. In Dalationships Guild, again, we start with our mission and values at the top. This largely governs the resources that we create. We have the key things that you have to know to get involved, located in the middle, along with our shared governance and treasury on the right.
resources and operations can also be found on these pages. Each of the resources and operations, usually within guilds, may have their own like work group or governance structure. In research guild, we generally guide our members into you know, like how to become a member and get started in the guild, um, how to make yourself known and introduce yourself in the guild. And then we have operations um, that teach folks how to claim the bounties and earn the incentives that we have in order to get involved with the guild. And then we have interest groups, it's mainly how we organize and work groups. And so we have resources for folks, for contributors, once they understand how to get involved in the guild and how we support projects. The Education Guild, you'd largely have four work groups located at the top left. And each of these work groups have their own um, operations and, you know, work streams and information on their Notion pages. In the Dalationships Guild, largely we have, we're an events-based guild right now. We collect information and build reciprocal relationships. So we have some key things that every member needs to know and key ways in how to get in touch. But our operations and project details can generally be found on the left sidebar. That's a lot of pages. <laughs> so let's review just briefly some of those guilds pages. With the research guild, again, our all our documentation, our governance documentation is here on the right. We have a link to the vision and mission of the Research Guild. Research Guild's mission will be to operate as a support node for conducting, guiding, and funding research that aligns with the goals and visions of Bankless DAO. That's our main purpose, our main vision for the Guild. You can see that Notion allows for commenting so as we do governance reviews, we ask folks to highlight sections that they want to comment on and leave those comments in the sidebar. At our next meeting, we'll go over some of these comments and resolve them in Guild. For the education work group, again, you have a list with a link to their page for their mission, vision, and values. You can see here that there's been essentially this is their draft or proposed mission by the, the guild. Um, the values of the education guild and this helps and informs projects as they get involved and again it looks like if you would like to leave a comment or make a suggestion, you can highlight some text, leave a comment on the side. In the Dalationships Guild, our mission, vision, values, and services are listed, listed at the very top of our page. And these have been changed very little over the last couple seasons. Um, but again, you can simply hover over the text and leave a comment on that text for us to discuss and resolve in a guild meeting. Each guild has structures for the roles in their guild. With the research guild, again, we have a page called Rules and Scope. And you can see that we outline here the names and descriptions of the roles, as well as the compensation for those roles or incentives. 
role holder salaries are about a third of the research guild's budgets um, and mostly just a series of calculations very easy to budget for these roles last season we've added support roles to um, our guild um, these are learner roles uh, we may want to look over the last season to see what adjustments we need to make on those roles or clarifications. And then we generally have the, um, the budgeting and not just role holder descriptions, but membership descriptions as well. And the roles and scope also defines what is contributions in the research guild. And of course, If you want to comment on any of these sections, you just highlight the section and add your comment. Again, the Education Guild has four work groups um, in the Education Guild. You can see they have a Guild Governance page. On this Governance page, it clearly defines the purpose of their governance framework, how consensus is found, what contributions are, as well as describing membership responsibilities, policies regarding role holders and members, and a description of how governance is managed through work groups in the Education Guild. In the Dalationships Guild, we have a Guild Roles page. And you can see here that we describe each role and the responsibilities of that role, as well as the budget allowance for that role. See that here we can update. this page with the learner roles. So any page comments um, you know, can be left as comments. Any specific comments on the descriptions and things in can be highlighted and commented on at the side. Another important page to understand is the governance policies of each guild. This will include how nominations and elections are managed, how the treasury is managed, signers in particularly, as well as resignation, removal, or conflict resolution policies. And every guild should have a description of their proposal framework. This proposal framework is found throughout the DAO in all the guilds and essentially describes how and where in the guild chat that you go to build consensus and develop a proposal and how using templates. Again, Folks should make sure to check with these processes, make sure they're up to date, they don't change from season to season, um, and improve these documents whenever possible. The proposal framework, as I said, is pretty common throughout the DAO. You can see in Education Guild that they have a framework for work groups. Um, I don't know that they actually have a proposal framework listed on their site, um, but in Dalationships Guild, we have a link to the proposal framework, and again, 
It's pretty much the same thing, except it explains um, how to do it within the Dalation Chips Discord. We also need to do some updating. And this is kind of how I go about reviewing governance documentation. Um, I ask myself if I can find it, where it is, and then ask it what state it's actually in. You can see that <clears throat> Um, this page hasn't been updated uh, since our Discord reorganization. So, we got some things to discuss in the next meeting. And with that, I will close this little video. I hope it's been helpful. I encourage folks to look and compare different guild governance docs and to read them to see if they jive with the current state of way that that guild operates. And then always you can select text, comment, so that we can bring it up in guild meetings. Thanks for your time. Hope this hasn't been too long and hope you have a great day. Take care.